Okay, welcome to the tutorial. Um, today we're going to work on bringing in, importing a mesh file, aligning it to the origins the way that we need, and getting it ready to start doing our, um, our the building of the geometry around it. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a project. In this case, it's the P365 Icarus Ace Evo. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to create this file and we'll save it. I've created a directory here under our Fusion and Five folder um, for holster mold design, and we got it. We're going to do two of them here. We're going to do one as a gun only, and one with a gun and a light on it, probably TLR7. Um, so what we're going to do is we've got this file. We're saved already. We're going to click on. Uh, let's turn on our origin first. We're going to right click up here at the top and say do not capture design history. It's gonna give us a warning, but we're gonna say continue anyways, because the things that we wanna do from this point on um, until we get the, the gun aligned, we don't wanna record. We're not gonna be going back. It's gonna be a lot of wasted time and energy here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit continue. It's good to go. We're gonna come up here to the top and we're gonna say insert and insert mesh. Now there are a couple of different ways to insert an STL file. What you don't want to do is open an STL file. That's one of the options they give you. You can come up here to file and say open or upload, excuse me, and you can open an STL file. It takes way too long and it does some really weird things in the background that sometimes slow down the computer. So the suggested way is through insert and that's directly from Autodesk tutorials. So you want to come up here to insert. We're going to hit insert mesh and we're going to go to our folder on our computer. So we'll come down here to the bottom and we're going to say select from my computer. Um, this defaults to where my locals are. Uh, so here's the four brothers. Here's our scans that have come in here and here's the Icarus Precision Ace Evo. So we're going to click on that guy and say open. And it's going to take a second to generate the mesh, but there you go. This one's fairly lightweight, so we can get around in there. Um, the reason I like to turn on the origin up here is because then we can see where we're placing everything. And uh, one thing you'll notice, so my document is set up in by default in inches. Um, the gun scan comes in in millimeters. So before we do anything, we want to switch this over to millimeter. So then that way the scale's correct. Once you start moving around, it really screws things up and then you'll have to delete the, the mesh and then reinsert it. Um, it's just a funky way that, um, that Autodesk works. So what I like to do on this is Typically, when you when you work in an assembly or you work in a drawing, um, your first move is what they call a free move, and that is that nothing is ever recorded. Now, we have our history, history turned off, so we don't really necessarily have to worry about that. But what it allows us to do is move these arrow keys around or position our model um, around where we want it to be. So as you can see, I'm just moving and dragging my arrow keys up and down. You can move it, you know, uh, grab your arrow, move it around here. You can, we're going to rotate it just a little bit and try to get it um, semi um, oriented the way that we want. Um, we're not going to worry about having it too perfect because we're going to do that in the next step here. Um, but what we want to do is just kind of play around with it a little bit. And what I like to do on this part here, um, actually, I'm going to do Control Z. Don't don't do that part there. Um, we'll save that for later. Do the alignment. Just do the um, where you move it, and so that it fits. Um, here, I like to aim the gun towards the front. Um, here's your x-axis, your y-axis, and your z-axis is pointing straight up and down. I like to move it um, so that the gun is somewhere within the X, Y, and Z planes so that we can use those planes to create geometry if we need to. And then we'll come back down here in the front and we're going to move the gun. So forget what I did with the um, trying to move it um, to a, or trying to align this stuff here because what happens then is it'll, it'll set those in an awkward position um, and you're trying to align it here to get it in between the, um, the um, those things. Yeah, the axis planes. <laughs> so um, now we've got it kind of where we want it, somewhere in between the X, Y, and Z where we can create planes and easily move them through. We're just going to say OK. Then our next step is we can start. I usually take a look at the model and see which, if there is a an easier way um, axis to start aligning from. Is that from the top? Is it from the side? 
Is it from the front? And it looks to me like if we start with the top, that seems to be the least out of character. So I would, and if you come up here to, to the, from the top down view, sorry, I said I should be from the right, from the right plane here, you can see that this top edge is what I meant to say. That one seems to be fairly flat in the scan here. So what I would say is we align this one first, then looking at from top down, that's kind of wonky there, um, but maybe from the front, yeah, I would say, let's do this. Let's start with this top edge here, then we're going to go to the top plane, and once this is aligned, then we're going to align this, this edge here, so it brings this out in line, and then we'll spin the, um, the front of the gun so that it is straight up and down. We'll save that for last. I think that should probably be the good order of operations. And when you're first starting to do this, this might take you several steps to try to look at it and figure out where you're at. But um, that's okay. I mean, it's, it's all a learning process there. Um, so what I do is I like to grab, since this is our, our right plane, we're going to grab this, this plane here that's parallel or perpendicular to our faces here. Uh, actually, it's par per parallel not perpendicular. We're going to grab this plane here and we're going to say create a sketch. Um, we're going to hit L for line and we're going to create a triangle, really simple triangle. Um, just drag point to point. And what we want to do is make sure we have a horizontal um, constraint. You can see the horizontal constraint is applied and I'll show you that in just a second. So horizontal constraint is applied right here and we've got our perpendicular constraint here. So we're making a triangle. Um, and what we want to do is just kind of size this length here to fit within the, um, the, the length of the top of the gun here where we know that that's straight. So we see that's probably good. We might even bring it in just a little bit. And then once we've got it sized about where we want it to go, we're going to hit D for dimension and select this, um, perpendicular or this this horizontal line here um, and we're just going to accept by default whatever that is there 3.996 we're not really concerned about it because it doesn't mean anything now what we're going to do is we're going to hit escape so we don't have anything selected and we're going to select this point here so we can move it around and this is where you want to try to get as accurate as you can here because you want to try to do this as few times as possible so you're going to grab your point and you're going to zoom in with your mouse, your middle mouse button, you're going to zoom in and place it somewhere along this edge here. Try to get it as good as you can get it. I mean, there's only so much you can do. That looks pretty darn good there. So once we're on that edge, we can right click on that point and say fix. And what that should do is it should turn, since we have a dimension of that line and we have a fixed location of it, that line should turn black, which means it's constrained. So now that allows us to grab this lower edge here and move it up and down and try to get it right along the top edge of that gun. And we're not far off of being flat here. Um, we will have to adjust this again so it's not, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect your first time. But just drag it up and try to fit it along an edge that's, that you know is flat along that, that surface there. And it looks like if you zoom in pretty good, we're, we're within tolerance of that. Those are probably less than about two thousandths difference deviations there, so we're not going to worry too much about it right now. Um, we're going to hit D for dimension, and we're going to select, it looks like the, by default it already had that lower line selected, and we'll drag this out somewhere in here so we can see where we are. And it's 0.2 degrees. So we're going to say finish sketch, zoom out, just do a double middle mouse click, and then hit M for move. Now it's going to ask us the body we want to select, and we're going to select the gun scan. And we want to move that up 0.2 degrees. So we're going to use this radial button here to adjust that to see which side it's going. And that could be positive or negative value. It's not always the same. Um, but once we figure that out, then we're going to put in our 0.2 degrees um, and hit enter. And we're going to say OK. And that's our first move. I've gotten this down in as little as six clicks or six moves and as many as 20. <laughs> so there's really no science to it. It's just trying to align it and find the perfect alignment that you can get. 
So now that we've got that one set here, we're going to turn off that top sketch because we don't need it anymore. And let's go to the front. I think we said we we're going to do the front. Let's see. Actually, I think we said we we're going to do the top next. Yeah, we are going to do from top down. And we're going to try to swing this edge here up higher and get that in line before we align the front. And uh, knowing that we're likely going to have to go back and adjust each one of these in the end. So um, I'm going to, once again, I'm going to select this this plane down here, which is uh, parallel with these upper faces here. We're going to hit L for line so that it automatically creates a sketch for us. Uh, we'll rotate it around. And if you feel like if you work better this way, go ahead and do it this way. I, for some reason, seem to work better on the horizontal. So I'm going to define my triangle one more time here. Do point to point. Make sure we got our horizontal constraint there. There. And these are just arbitrary lengths. There's nothing there. We're going to hit Escape to get out of that tool. Hit D for dimension. And I think I'll probably make that slightly shorter, so I'll make it 4.5 inches. There we go. Now, we're going to hit Escape again, so we get out of dimension. And we're going to select our point and zoom in. And we're going to try to bring this down to somewhere along an edge. I like to be able to see daylight on one side. Um, that way you're not trying to guess what part of the face you're on here. So, Because again, we're going to have to come back and readjust this. So let's try to pick this face here. We're going to right click it and say fix. And then we're going to zoom out. And all we're going to try to do is try to bring this, this edge here somewhere within the, the straight edge of that, that face there. Uh, on this one here, it looks like we're slightly out of... Um, proportion or the way that the gun is laying for this to come down any farther but I kind of like that just because we're not too far past that edge that front edge there and it um, and it lines right up here along the edge of the gun so um, once we're satisfied that hit escape just so nothing's active hit D for dimension and we're going to do this um, angle line to the flat line and somewhere within it we'll hit um, left click and hit enter and that, now we know it's 5.5 degrees so we have to swing the butt of this gun out so now we're going to hit m for move we're going to select our object and we're going to grab this radial button and move that 5.5 degrees look at that that was pretty pretty darn good there um, we'll hit enter so now we can turn off this sketch because our first two moves are out of the way and if we go back to the the first view that we had we're still pretty parallel to the surface. Um, we come up to the top, the gun is much straighter, and now all we have to do is kick that, bring it back around. And then after that, all we have to do is refine it. So that'll be the next step. So we're gonna swing it around to the front. And one thing to keep in mind is really in the holsters, um, and I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna select, uh, let's, let's spin it around this way. We're going to select this face, and I'm just going to create this for, for talking purposes, demonstration purposes. So I'll select this face here, and I'm going to create a rectangle on this face. For holster making purposes, we are concerned with this area here, it's right here. And really, we're going to bisect this area here up to about there. So we're not concerned about the, the grip or any of this stuff in the back here, really any of this stuff in the back here, unless it takes up room where we have to clear the holster. But for the most part, the sweat guard is going to come up this high, but the, um, the um, lead in is going to be somewhere around here for the, um, for the outside, the non-sweat guard side. So it'll be right around that portion. Um, and this will actually be a little bit tighter into the hand guard because we'll follow that up a little bit. But you'll see as we create this geometry when we create the mold. But um, really, so with that being said, and the reason why I said it is when we come over here to the front, we need to find the geometry that matters most. And for us, the geometry that matters most is the upper portion of the, the handgun and likely the slide area. And really, in this model, it is the slide area. So we're going to turn off that sketch that we just created so it doesn't cause any interference here. We're going to select our front forward face here. And then we're going to hit L for line. And once again, we're going to create our triangle. And we're going to do our triangle. 
I kind of like this definition right here because it's nice and dark and we can see that. So I'm just going to create a, a um, vertical line here, another um, triangle. We'll hit D for dimension to give it, I think I like that size there. So we'll say enter 0.9, hit escape, select the point of our triangle, and we're going to move it right over here to the edge of where that gun is, the rear part of the gun. Uh, and we're thinking, there we go. Sometimes that happens um, with fusion. It's, I mean, uh, it, there's a lot of points going on here with this model. So um, if it, if it starts thinking a lot, then it becomes a problem. But for the most part, expect that sometimes when you do a move, it's going to start thinking and that little hourglass thing will come up there. Or the little spinner will come up. So we found an edge here. It was pretty close. We're going to have to move this anyway. So we're going to call that good. Right click on it and say fix. And then once again, we're going to come up here to the edge and we're going to bring this angle over until it lines flat, flat up with that edge. And we're getting really, really close here. There is some variance in the scanner. The scanner does do, um, I think it's point, 0 0.01 millimeter revolution, resolution or 0 0.05 millimeter resolution, which in the scheme of things is like two thousandths of an inch, like the, the width of a human hair. So some of these deviations we're going to see, it's just blown up more in CAD. So don't, don't stress too much about it. What we're going to do is now is we're going to grab our D tool and we're going to um, select both of those lines and label that. And now we know we're 11.5 degrees out of whack. So we're going to hit finish sketch. Once again, hit the M tool. We're going to select our, our gun anywhere on the gun and we're going to rotate here 11.5. Oh, helps when you hit the decimal. And we're going to hit enter. Okay, now as you can see, there's a couple of things here. We're fairly straight. I mean, we're, we're just a couple of degrees off. And the way that, that I judge a couple of degrees off on it are two different ways. Um, one is, and the primary way that I, I see that, is you can see the forward sight here, right in this area, is not centered on the rear sights. So that should be centered, as well as the top of the forward sight should be the same height as the rear sights. Um, so we know we've got to come down and we've got to twist over from bring that back in just out just a little bit more. And all this is is just a series of finer movements. It's creating our triangles, um, moving the gun in each of the axis until we're satisfied with how, how well that looks. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here and uh, try to do it without explanation because we'll just fast forward through it and then you'll see... Um, once we're aligned and then how I do the final move so that we have it set up to where we want to start building our geometry.
one thing that I did want to add here was the reason why we add the dimension in the beginning is sometimes if you start moving this around, it gets all crazy, and this triangle can go in all kinds of different directions. So by creating this horizontal plane and then giving it a, a dimension, it tends to lock it down a little bit more and um, stays within confines of a triangle. Otherwise, it can get really wonky. So always just remember to define that as a as that first line as horizontal or perpendicular, or uh, sorry, um, vertical or horizontal and give it a dimension and then once you've got that then you can play with your angle all day long uh, and it doesn't screw up the the triangle so we're going to come in here again and i'll just pick up where i left off Okay, so coming back to our, um, our model, I think I'm going to stop here as far as alignment because there's a couple of things that I see here. I see about the same distance between the front of the muzzle of the gun and the side of the gun going with the taper all the way back on both sides. Um, going with the, the side view, the profile of the gun, it's about as flat as I can get it, and I really like to do that for doing our extrusions. Um, so we're, we're not going to worry too much on this one about the sight being slightly taller, but you can see there's almost equal amount of spacing between the, the left and the right side of the, um, the sights here. Um, there's a little bit of deformity in the back here, I think, so I'm going to call this good enough to, um, to start building geometry off of. So at this point, we have one last move that we're going to do. Actually, let's stop here, and in the second video, we'll do the move, and then we'll start building geometry.